first of all, thanks to uh, the organizer to uh, enable me to present Syrian Biotech. Um, Syrian Biotech is our, a young biotech company and we are focusing on viral vector technologies. So today we are non-clinical. Um, the company is profitable and our business model is uh, we are developing technologies to reduce the costs of manufacturing of viral vectors and also of uh, cell therapeutics. And we have a collaboration business model and uh, then typically a licensing. Now I, I would like to start, um, what is the, the base of the company? So, uh, okay, it's here. So that's where it started. Uh, this is David Fetter. Um, this is the bubble boy you all know. And uh, well, he was treated at the Baylor College, uh, kept in the sterile environment for several years, and he received a bone marrow transplantation and um, well, sadly, a virus was reactivated and uh, then he died. And for Siri on this boy is important. Uh, this is Jack Crick. It's a picture from a UCL um, um, clinical trial by Professor Thrasher. And he received um, gene-modified hematopoietic stem cells using a lentivirus third generation. And actually, he survived. And I like this picture much better than the other one. And I think that that was the, the turning point when we realized how difficult it was to manufacture those hematopoietic stem cells. And that's about the talk today. So I would first like to introduce some of the challenges and then what Sirion brings to the field, what are products we have and solutions to uh, get this more efficient. The challenges are really strong ones. So we have first in, in AV manufacturing or AV gene therapies and cell therapies, we have a huge uh, influx of money and huge investment. So there is a need to return on invest. And I guess given the challenges today, I think it's not the clinical efficacy that is the challenge. It's more that there are other challenges like the manufacturing so if you look at, uh, for example, for Duchenne muscular dystrophy, even if you treat a very young uh, boy, five kilograms, and you need to administer two times 10 to the 14 vector genomes per patient, you see that it's almost impossible nowadays to produce the vectors uh, for all the patients. And uh, more importantly, if you look at the RAM's quarterly report, you see that uh, alone in quarter two, there are 94 trials in phase three, so the manufacturing issue is a problem. And I guess one of the things that we need to have is not producing or not producing more, let's say, in 100,000 liter uh, fermenters. It's making the vector more efficient. The second, or let's say related to it, is the cost. So if you look today at the cost models for Syntaglo or Soliensma, you see the price is great because the patient benefits from it. So you have um, savings for the cost system. Uh, it may even be appropriate to ask for a price delivering 22 quality adjusted life years uh, for, so, uh, for Syntaglo. So that's great. However, the manufacturing costs, which for an autologous T cell therapy or stem cell therapy, they are often uh, up to one third of the price. So that's a real challenge. And uh, I think what I would like to do today is um, to give you this idea. So if you look at the price that was um, for, um, uh, for the sequencing costs of a megabase per DNA, you see that Moore's law, which is already a very strong indicator that in uh, you can reduce uh, the price with innovation. In biotechnology, you see there are, it's even more important. So you can even further bring down the costs by innovation. And that's what we're gonna do. And uh, who's gonna do it? Well, listen. Biotech. Biotech. 
okay, I could not resist when I found this track. Uh, sorry about the joke. <laughs> okay, and now um, coming to Sirion. So there, when, we, when we looked, when we started the company, um, we knew that manufacturing of stem cell products using lentivirus and T cell products is difficult. So we started searching for enhancers that would reduce the amount of lentivirus and increase their genetic modification of the cells. And what we came up is a technology called LentiBoost. It's a new class of uh, transduction enhancers. Um, it has a hydrophobic core, hydrophilic side chains, and actually it forms like core shell me cells. The idea um, came from membrane sealing experiments. So they, uh, those molecules interact with membranes, but they close the membranes as well. And if you have a kind of mechanistic view on lentivirus transduction, there are two membranes that fuse. They have other uh, properties as well, so they have a temperature um, sensitive way to be fluid or solid. So at higher temperature you, and higher concentration of poloxamil, you can even immobilize their viral vectors and have a local release. Um, they are used in phase two for drug delivery. Uh, that's an old and established technology, but using uh, poloxamils for transduction was um, novel and it was basically uh, a surprise that it worked. If you look at the problem at the beginning, so when uh, we started working with stem cells, we had approximately 20, maybe 30 percent of stem cells that are transduced after an expansion uh, of 12 days in vitro, and adding the poloxamir, we could increase this to 80 percent. What is more important here is that we can have a dose-dependent increase in the vector copy number per cell. This is a great result because then the expression level and also duration of the expression is uh, expanded. We don't see any toxicity since the uh, chemical itself is, is neutral. And uh, if we look at the uptake, so this was our the first uh, clinical use started in 2015. Now we have a range of uh, protocols for clinical use which I established and published, mostly combinations of a poloxamir and a second transduction enhancer. We also had uh, commercial licenses like Orchard. Uh, thank you, Orchard, that we could publish this uh, press release. And uh, the NIH, where um, the press release that was issued this year showed complete restoration of uh, the immune system for a uh, boy or for patients treated um, for, uh, with hematopoietic stem cells gene modified. So this is related, uh, same disease, SCID. So we are quite happy to see that the technology improves uh, the clinical outcome, but most importantly also the reduction of vector amounts used two to fivefold. Sirion is manufacturing as well AV vectors. I, I think one of their most uh, important tasks at Sirion is that we assist uh, our clients to develop processes. So we are going up to the non-GMP stage, up to preclinical studies, one, to, one times 10 to the 15 vector genomes. And we also started to think about how could we improve vectors and how could we uh, lower the dose of uh, a vector given to a patient. And one technology which is uh, very important is AV evolution. AV evolution, I will introduce the technology in a minute, is um, basically a technology where you have millions of AV cap seeds and then you select the cap seeds which have new properties in an animal model. We do this in non-human primates. Uh, typically, you have three selection rounds. We use very advanced technologies, uh, NGS. Uh, we go even down to the single cell uh, level. And currently, we have collaborations with Denali, and uh, we have collaborations with Acucella for an optogenetics gene therapy. Um, this is helping a lot and now exemplifying how it works. So you insert a um, randomized peptide sequence in the capsid of an AV vector. 
you get millions of vectors, typically 50 millions. Then you apply the vector, and then you use NGS to track individual capsids using the peptide sequence as its barcode. And what you can see here is that you can turn any vector, like in this case an AV9 vector, it would not infect human CD4 cells, but after selection you get variants which very efficiently select or transduce um, the, the cells. This is also true in vivo. This is another vector type uh, called AVDJ, and it was all developed in collaboration uh, with Professor Grimm in Heidelberg. So those are examples where we can improve the specificity and efficacy by more than 10,000 fold compared to the starting material. And I guess coming back to the potential, so we have a two to five fold reduction in vectors that we can use um, by using enhancer technologies. There is a potential to optimize the production process. However, we see the biggest potential in the AAV evolution technology where we can really increase their uh, efficiency by log units. And uh, I guess what is very important, and uh, that's what we would like, or what I would like to announce today, is we also bring down early clinical development costs. Uh, we have an access uh, program. Um, this is um, providing the Lentiboost technology, but other technologies of Sirion as well, uh, to non-commercial clinical trials for free. Um, the license is for free, so we have uh, partners here, um, mainly uh, large research um, institutes in the US, uh, Harry Malek at the NIH, or Don Cohn at the UCLA, but also in Europe and in China. And uh, currently, Lentiboost is used uh, in more than 10 trials uh, we have a first product uh, that was manufactured using the polymer technology on, in the market in Europe. And I guess we expect many more clinical trials. So I hope that this action will help to um, spread our, the technology and, of course, our, also help to, our, let's say, improve the costs of early clinical research. Syrian Biotech is... Um, currently expanding to Boston, so we opened an office. We are in the process of raising um, a financial round which will enable Sirion to expand its, te its technology and also develop AV vectors for uh, more organs that we can then provide uh, for clinical development to our licensees. Um, thank you very much. Back.